Uh, today is uh, part two of uh, many more messages and many more shows to come. I have with me today uh, two brothers have also survived uh, the program to destroy and demise of our people. I have with me today uh, Terry Barfield from uh, South Family and I also have Raviel, Raviel Barfield. Yeah, Raviel Barfield. Raviel Barfield. Also. Also, as well. Um, before we uh, get into that, I want to add some things to um, what we started off with last week. Let me start and open up uh, as this. Udubalai mini shaitanir rajim. Bismillahi rahmanir rahim. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Alhamdulillah Rabbi al Alameen. Iyak na Buddha, Iyak na Astaeen. Indina Soroto Mustakim. Soroto Latina Antam Alehim. Gabriel Mcdubi Alehim. Or the darling. Amin. Last, the first show, we started off with uh, discussing how Crips and Blood spread all, of, all across America. Uh, through approximately about 110 cities, meaning Crips, Bloods, and crack cocaine ended up in these different communities, 110 cities. And this was, this transpired and happened through the drug trade. And I want people to understand this. The Bible says the stone that the builders reject will become the capstone. So many of us have issues with some of us who were living this lifestyle and were doing the things we were doing. And we must concur, we were men to society, but we were men to society number two. I want to discuss today men to society number one. And I'm not shedding blame. I'm just giving truth and facts. And we want other people to make up their own mind on who is the real men to society. And I will concur, I will say this ahead of time, it's not all of us, okay? But let me say this, <clears throat> to understand the background of the drug trade, two things you must understand. The first thing you must do, you must get a book called Dark Alliance by Gary Webb. You must get this book, you must research this book. Gary Webb was an investigative reporter who broke the story about how the CIA was using Contras, informants, Contra CIA operatives to finance the Contra war in Nicaragua and dumping cocaine in our communities to finance this and destroying our communities at the same time. You must get this book. Let me give you a few facts on this first before we get into our piece here. Uh, in 1979, you had Daniel Ortega who overthrew the Nic Nicaraguan dictator. After that point, you had the Contra rebels who were financed and supported by Reagan, the Reagan administration, and Bush who was also involved with this support. This happened in 1979. Ortega overthrew the Contras. What happened was Congress would not financially support the Contras because they had a lot of uh, human rights violations. So Congress wouldn't support them. So Reagan and Bush and the CIA had to figure out how to finance and support them in their own backyard. And they decided to do this with cocaine. Now, the Contras, the Nicaraguans, the first drug bust with the Contras in Nicaragua happened in San Francisco, San Francisco in California. They, they seized over about, over about 400 pounds. It was like the largest drug bust at that time, okay? Then, 
Blandon, who was also a CIA operative who gave Freeway Rick all his drugs, which Freeway Rick at that time in the 80s, when I was a kid going to California, Freeway Rick was like a ghost. Uh, he was making close to like a, Blandon was supplying him where he would make like a close to a million dollars a day. And it all makes sense when you understand how young people who are poor, black, end up with military style weapons. And California was flooded with so much drugs that it floated all across America, even to Nebraska and the Midwest where we are right here today, brother. And I'm here today with some brothers who are also a byproduct of that program. And I want to start off with uh, Brother Terry, who's released from prison. And I want you to discuss uh, not only your experience, but what you plan on doing and what you see as the problem right now. I see the problem that, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there that's, you know, claiming different things, different hoods and this and that and that. Uh, but they really ain't really been through the stuff that, like, my nephew been through and I and you. And uh, they just, you know, basically just, just out there, you know, wasting up space, you know what I'm saying? They got some real people in there, you know, coming there and, you know, let y'all know to try to go another way because, you know, people out there, they're killing each other for no reason in Omaha. And uh, I did a lot of things in my past too, as you know, um, I got out on Father's Day, June 21st. And uh, I'm just trying to make some changes, you know, y'all, you know, people out there, y'all know who I am, this and that and that and what I've been through. and. Uh, I'm just trying to get back to this community, man, because I feel I did so much wrong that I want to, you know, you know, start doing right, you know. So that's one thing right there. My nephew right here, he, he want to speak about a few things too. Okay. Uh, what do you think uh, the problem is and, and what solutions you have? And also give us your experience too. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, the problem, the problem is, is, is lack of education, and not just by school books. Uh, it's just lack of education toward, uh, toward the right way to actually survive without dealing drugs or, or doing drugs or, or, or what they call game banging today. You know, so education, and just education as far as knowing yourself and knowing what you can do, that's the first step toward toward everybody individually being able to make the make the type of change to make sure they survive and then make sure their bloodline survives okay and as far as what we're trying to do you know just uh, just like you know uh, just like Michael said you know we're just trying to do some do some right in the community you know and I definitely stand behind my uncle 100 percent and we're trying to be able to develop programs and develop solutions you know with like-minded people to be able to come up with you know programs that uh be able to do not only not just divert these youngsters as well as you know ogs and g's you know off of off of the track that they're currently on to be able to you know show them a different path and be able to justify what we're doing by example so um that's you know that's our overall goal uh, as far as my personal experience um I've, I've always i've just been a soldier following up under my uncle you know, since i was 17 years old well most of my life but you know, when, when I came to terms with, you know, well, what our reality was at the time, I just rolled with it. And, you know, I rolled with it because, you know, my uncle rolled with it. You know, and, and that led to, that led to um, prison, um, years in prison, you know, years in solitary confinement, uh, just continuing in the gang activity and, and just being ignorant, more or less, you know. Um, and at the time, we didn't understand that we was being ignorant. We was just, you know, we were just trying to be able to, to, you know, just be about what we knew, or what I mean is, is we were just just representing what what we thought was, you know, the actual was the answer to everything that we saw, you know. Um, so you know, uh, uh, at the end of the day, though, you know, we all grow up, you know, and and we are going to do one or two things. We're going to continue in, in the same type of path, and you know, that's almost like beating yourself in the head, you know, constantly, or you know, you're going to get tired of getting beaten in the head and make some changes so your head don't hurt no more. So. So at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, uh, um, I, I believe my, my uncle seen that first, and and it, you know, it took a while for me to really see what he was talking about, and then and over time, you know, uh, once I was released from prison, he was still in, and that that actually, 
in a way that almost helped me because I was able to really learn more about life and, and myself and what I need to do as compared to what, you know, we was doing for so long. So, and, and you know, we're here where we're at now, you know, because of it, because of, you know, because of our bad experiences as well as, you know, this overall, this overall life experiences, you know, we, you know, we're here trying to make the change. So. I hear you, brother. Um, <clears throat> I want to ask both of you, and I want to ask you first, brother. Um, what do y'all think about, and I'm not talking about conspiracy nuts. I'm talking about nuts who have conspired against us. Okay. Um, what do y'all think about how cocaine, crack cocaine, being the pretext of gangs spreading all across America. We're talking about 110 cities. Mm -hmm. And that being the pretext as to why we're Crips and Bloods. And also how we have evidence of people who are elected, who are supposed to protect us, all of us. Mm -hmm. What do y'all think about them and the effects of crack cocaine and how it's impact all these all these cities across America. Question. Well, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, first of all, it I believe it's truly it truly is a conspiracy. First of all, my uh, my personal opinion of politicians they're not very high to be honest with you. You know, I mean overall, but I know there's a lot of brothers though. There's a lot of there's a lot of politicians that's that's actually honest and truthful trying to make a change. But if you look at the overall system and not just from not just from the 80s, you know, I mean, you have to look at their system. They've implemented this system since the 1960s. Yeah, you know, so I mean, you know, and and if if I if you look at it from the from the standpoint of the government, I mean, it's like you're not, we're not inventing the wheel. We're not reinventing the wheel. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. So if we sold dope to these people back in the 60s, but then it calmed down, all we did is just transfer that heroin to the cocaine. And, you know, we basically use the same, the same motivations, you know, uh, to, to be able to plot their downfall, you know, which is greed and, well, you know, getting high and, and, you know, I mean, that, that those are the two things that I think of first off, you know, greed, greed and people getting high, you know, because, you know, on the side of a dope dealer, whether you, you know, whether you was dealing heroin back then or you were selling coke today, you know, uh, your goal is to get rich because you come from nothing and you know that you don't have any other way beside playing basketball or, you know, um, or, be, or, you know, being in, in some type of entertainment industry to be able to achieve that, that, that same type of level. So the only way to do that is, you know, for a lot of these young brothers and sisters to be able to go out there and sell these drugs in mass quantities. You know, but at the same time, though, some of them may be conscious enough to know that, okay, I know I'm killing myself and killing others because I'm selling this stuff. But you know what, though? My family got to eat or, they, you know, people, a lot of people are trying to justify or rationalize the reason why they're doing it. But And they may even be conscious of the overall conspiracy by the government. But, you know, sometimes greed takes a hold of, you know, you know, takes first precedence over, over anything. So uh, long story short, you know, uh, the government or I'll just say the powers that be, they have a plan that has been working for decades for them. So, I mean, if it's not broke, why fix it? So, I mean, that's, that's how they're looking at it. And eventually, I mean, uh, the good thing is, though, is that we, we are, res we are res resilient people. You know, we're strong people. And they didn't done a lot. They didn't try to kill us all many times throughout these years. And it still hasn't worked. They, they tried to make us overdose in mass quantities. And guess what? We're still here. So... I mean, uh, it's 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 a uh, it's it's definitely a uh, it's it's a messed up situation. And but but at the end of the day, though, I mean, it's it's up to us to make that choice individually whether you are gonna either sell that or not or not use it or what have you. So yeah, that's good. To me, man, I think it, I know the government is corrupt. So I really don't believe in the government because they're trying to you know kill off a lot of people, especially when they put the cocaine, you know in all these cities and states around the United States and around the world, you know. And uh, like with me, back in the days, you know, being one of the top dogs of the South family, uh, the drugs was introduced and, you know, we bit into it, you know what I'm saying? Because we seen what this fast money was like, you know, fast cars, big jewelry, uh, everything, nice clothes, you know, something we ain't never had because we're from the ghetto, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, to me, I can look at it in a way as a blessing. Then I can look at it as a curse, too. You know what I'm saying? 
right. because, you know, I did plenty of years in the penitentiary, just a little bit for that, you know, uh, was in prison for two murders and stuff. I'm blessed to be out here. Thank the Lord for that. Uh, but mm -hmm. you talk about cocaine and stuff like that, crack and all that. It was designed to be in poor, poor cities and poor neighborhoods right. and, you know, the ghettos, you know what I'm saying? Because mostly black people, you know, us people as a kind, we, you know, people do that drug, you know what I'm saying? It's a quick high for them, this and that and that. But, you know, even though we didn't mess with the drug, we seen what it's doing to other people. You know, back there, we getting their, I'm getting their food stamps, I'm getting their TVs, their cars and everything. And I'm like, wow, this is this is the lick. You know what I'm saying? But all along, these people want us to do that so they can come and indict us and get us locked mm -hmm. up, go to state prisons, federal penitentiaries. Okay, we got rid of them. And it's always somebody new coming to town. Right. You know what I'm saying? With the same product. So, I mean, that's just what I feel about it, you know. Mm -hmm. but, so, um, yeah. Interesting thing. Um, I have uh, researched where they've done these same studies on lab rats. And what they've done is they have a confined area and they gradually introduce, they'll put five rats in there. And there's enough food in there for them. The temperature is right. All five of those rats are comfortable. They live normal lives. They introduce another five rats. But there's only enough food for five. And then they've increased more and more rats in this same confined environment. Over a period of time, the rats start selecting and following certain leaders and those certain leaders eat first because they're the strongest mm -hmm. then they even introduce drugs in that environment and some of the rats became psychotic and they began to like for example with us you notice that um, anyone that's been in the military or you've been in conflict all the time the amygdala is a part of the brain which releases emotion, fear, aggression. They're constantly have, if you have an individual who lives from the seat of that in their mind, the rational part of you shuts down. The compassionate part of you dies. And so we have to ask ourselves, why do we keep going for the same thing? Because after all, like you grew up in projects a project is an experiment right and so I want the youngsters to understand that if there is a puppeteer you can make the conscious decision on whether you're gonna be the puppet if there is a laboratory experiment going on to going on or a social engineered laboratory experiment going on we need to be cognizant of that and not be a willing participant. Right. And so now we're getting into, and I, I dealt with this subject before on the first show, is war. War is a series of extremes. And we're, what we're talking about is, when we're talking about cocaine, we're talking about warfare. Warfare, you can use, there's a chemical component of warfare. Chemical warfare is when you use drugs or any other intoxicant to neutralize or control your enemy. Mm -hmm. There's also biological warfare where you can sterilize your enemy, neutralize your enemy. In the 70s, our birth rate exploded. Right. What happened with the crack e epidemic was when? 79 all the way up to the 80s. Mm -hmm. And another thing what happened is it was a new form of Jim Crow because instead of saying nigga no you're a criminal and when you become a criminal you can't you can't vote when you come out of prison as far as you're getting a job and getting gainful em employment that's null and vo void mm -hmm. so you actually castrate us not only as human beings but you also castrate us mm -hmm. as citizens 
And so what I want to deal with is when are we, because they, it's the same magic tricks. They're not doing nothing new like, he, no. like the brother here said. It's the same magic tricks. When are we going to invest into the younger generation and equip, with, uh, equip them with all of their machinations tricks? That's the thing. And, 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 and so what do y'all think we need to do as far as doing that? Or do y'all believe we need to do that? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, we definitely do. Um, and you see, the, 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 the strategy, sh well, in, in our opinion is, is that we should be able to, to actually kill the root so the tree don't grow. And what I mean by that is just, just like focusing on a, on a specific target group starting off. And at this point, originally we, we were talking about this summer, we were talking about <coughs> 12 to 15. But at this point, we got to break that number down to 10 to 15 now because, you know, you know as you know, we got kids 12 years old now committing murders around this time. Exactly. So, so the thing is, is to focus on that specific age group because this is the age group to where they're influenced by gang members. They're riding the fence between becoming gang members or, you know, even just hustling, you know, because they either which way they're surrounded. They're, they're, that's this is their most of their environment. So, so if we can actually target that group and then show them show them in a very persuasive way another direction or more or less saying okay we know you see this right here as far as the drugs the banging and how to get that quick money but guess what let's show let, let, let me show you this way because this is way you're still going to get that money but it's not going to come as quick as you think but it's going to help you in the long term and it's going to keep you out of jail so i said all that just to say if we can focus on a specific age group before they become full-fledged bangers, that way, you know, now we know that they not only have a choice, but nine times out of ten, they're going to make the right decision as far as either staying in school to be able to pursue, uh, you know, educate themselves further or go to college or, you know, um, you know, maybe focus on sports if they, if they had that type of mind to do it. You know, but the main thing is we want to be able to make sure we can steer them away from anything that the older homeboys are doing. So, you know, you know that's a good point that he, he brought up there um, because um, – the Bible says the youth are like fresh dew drops. And if you understand any human being, any human being, every human being is like a, a tabula rasa. It's like a, a clean slate or wet clay. So you can take any human being, you can mold them into anything that you desire. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree with that. I think, man, another the problem is, is, I mean, these kids need some guidance, man. And, you know, if we can reach out to some of their OGs or, right. you know, whatever, you know, the older people that they're looking up to, you know, and come, come, come with this ride with us, you know, join us, you know what I'm saying? Call us here, you know, y'all know who I am, Terry Barfield, Big Bar, Raviel, my nephew, Robert Penn. Uh, you know, just get a hold of us, man. Let's try to work, you know, you know, get these kids, man, the right way. Don't be... You know, end of the day here, take this gun, go do this. You know, you ain't gonna do nothing but uh, probation or, uh, you know, a year or two in jail, that ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Let's just clean it up, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, man, we ain't doing nothing but killing each other. You know, I, I realize that. You know, I'm involved in two or three murders, you know what I'm saying? And I, I you know, I think about that a lot. You know what I'm saying? What, what was I doing back then? What was I tripping on? You know, gang territory, drugs, you owe me money, this and that and that. Don't you know who I am? You know, I'm about to pop you. You don't get my money, you know, all this. Man, that was just senseless, you know what I'm saying? So now it's, it's time, you know, I, I really understand what life is about now. I value my life. I got kids out there, you know what I'm saying? And I love my kids. And, uh, you know, like before I got out on Father's Day, my father, my, my son, he uh, Googled our name, you know. You know, we got the same name, you know, Terry Barfield, he's Terry Barfield Jr. He said, Dad, I Googled our name, and uh, I didn't know you was a, you was a gang leader, Dad? What are you? Crip or blood, you know, and I was like, what? I said, man, when I get out, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to talk to you about everything, and that's exactly what I did. He don't even mention no gang. He don't mention none of that. His mind is focused on school, you know what I'm saying? I, even if I got to reward him, 
I know we probably gonna listen to this, but it's the truth. You know, here, I'll get you this. Be good in school, I'll get you that. It's better than being out in the streets or calling, excuse me, uh, Mr. Barfield, your son was found over here, or this and that and that, or your son was involved in a murder, this and that and that. The, the cycle gonna repeat itself again then. Right. So we might as well just stop this. You know what I'm talking about. Shh. You know what I'm saying? It. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I can cuss on there, but we need to stop it, man. That's my passion, man. My nephew know that, man. He been he been riding with me from day one. You know, he looked at me doing things, having big money, me giving him cars and jewelry and all this at a young age, and he's like, damn, I'm getting it like this. You know what I'm saying? It's that easy. Here you go, Nev. You know what I'm saying? But now we ain't doing that. Instead of putting them drugs in them kids' hands and guns, put that knowledge in them kids' mm -hmm. minds. You know what I'm saying? So it can, like that. you know what I'm saying, later on down the road, do that to their kids. Not the yeah. same cycle as, you know, my dad is a hardcore person. He's this and that and that. Now, let me see what it feel like to kill somebody or shoot somebody, this and that and that. You know what I'm saying? The only way I get down again is somebody mess with my kids. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, the, the message I'm trying to send is, you got to think, man. Like me, since I've been out, I done got mad at a few situations, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to react, but I know I couldn't because the spotlight is on me and I'm trying to work with different people. You know, Ben Gray, Brother Robert, you know what I'm saying, a few other people in the community. So, I mean, that's my passion, man, to help these kids out. If y'all can listen to me, man, change your life. Any of you, you know, gang members out there, you know, gang leaders, man, help these kids out with us, man. Go ahead, nephew. I mean that was I couldn't I couldn't <laughs> wow man, that's it man. I, can't, that's, I couldn't I couldn't add nothing on to that I mean that's that's the realest talk right yeah. there I mean you know at the end of the day I mean you know we could say a million things but you know many just times. just like Unc said I mean you know part of part of that you know part of that trickle down theory you know reaching out to them OGs you know a lot of OGs exactly. don't listen to brothers yeah, like y'all exactly man you know, I'm not so, no big time speaker or nothing like that I I know the streets but you're keeping it you real know what I'm saying I'm, I ain't go to Toastmasters. Yeah. If I did, you know, I can be coming off a lot better, but I'm, it's coming from my heart. That's all that matters. You it's know all what I'm that saying? matters. It's totally I'm trying genuine. to get with these kids, man, to change their life around, man. And I know some of you OGs out there, y'all know who I am. Well, most of y'all do. So, man, holler at me, man. Y'all can get my number. It's very easy. Matter of fact, I put it on there. 402-301-5031. That's my phone number. Hey, hey man, brother. Man. Um, I want to say this too to the youngsters that might uh, catch wind of this. Um, your instincts are telling you that you're at war, but you don't know who you're at war with. Exactly. Right? And right. there's a void that's taking place. You have to understand this. Just like in the jungle, if you watch, I was watching a wildlife show and I noticed how all of the hyenas, they would challenge the female lionesses. But if there was one male lion, it could be 20 hyenas, they wouldn't challenge him. And so, and, and we also get this parable in the Bible, in the Quran, where Pharaoh said, bring me all the male children. He didn't say female. He said males, because males emerge into men. And men, like I said last week, they produce and protect a nation. Right. And so to the youngsters, we're not interested in making you milk toast weak people. That's not in our nature. And some of us, we're men. And some of us are alpha males. It is what it is. What we want y'all to understand is that your strength is being turned in on yourself. It's being turned in on our communities. It's being turned in on our women. It's being turned in on our children. Like the brother sitting there talking about his son. There was a void. There was a void there. You getting out of prison and you have to explain to your son. He has to hear through the computer via anything else to find out what his connection is with you. We have to stop this void. And we're being set up. But what I want the youngsters to understand, okay, we're not promoting weakness. We're promoting control with your strength. That's what we need to teach the youngsters, how to control their strength. Go ahead, man. I was going to say, I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, put that any better because at the end of the day, I mean, you got 
I mean, you got us here trying to tell you the right thing. And, and at this point, society is so poisoned that you got some real brothers that's telling you to do the right thing, but some people can misconstrue it as, just like Brother Robert said, being is being weak or, or something like that. See, no, inf information is power. So, you know, our job is to inform you, first of all, okay, off top. So the thing is, we definitely want to show a different type of way. You know, we're going to keep on telling you the truth. We're going to keep on telling you what it is. And we're definitely going to tell you to keep on you know keep on you know surviving but stop killing each other because at the same time see see a lot of a lot of uh you know a lot of people out there on the street they think they may think that okay well you know i'm hard because i didn't bang on this dude you know what prove to us how hard you are by not banging on that next man bang on the system at the end of the day you know exactly exactly yeah bang on them books you know like they said in that movie you know because See, because once you actually start banging against who your real enemy is, like Brother Robert said, you're going to find a real battle. And then that's going to determine your strength and your worth as a man at the end of the day. Because either you're going to stand up and conquer that situation or you're going to fall and fold. So if you're strong and you're real, you're going to stand up and, you know, you're going to take care of business. And at the same time, you're helping yourself and you're helping your community and you're helping your bloodline. You know, because you're showing everybody, including your family first, that, hey, you know what, this is really what I can do and this is what I'm about. So, hey amen. So, I think we done summed it up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't think we can get a, you know, uh, next week, come back and do a little follow up or something like that, see how many calls we get. Because mm -hmm. uh, I'm out there, man. I'm not scared to go anywhere. Y'all know that. I'll meet you if you're a gang member, you want whatever, gang leader, you want to holler at me, holler at me, man. Yeah. Go anywhere, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's, because I want y'all to change, man. I know if I could do it, y'all can do it, man. This is my passion right now. There's a lot of people mm -hmm. out there saying, oh, man, he, he, he's going he's gonna to have a downfall. He's going. I'm not looking forward to that. You know, it don't even matter to me because I know where my passion is at, and I'm moving forward with this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And here's an interesting thing, too, man. Um, let me share this with you, brothers. The, the last time uh, I went out to Cali and, and, and what's happening in, in, in Cali, because um, we're connected with them in the wrong way, by the way. Right. Um, one of the things that's happening in Cali is the gang thing has turned racial. It is black versus brown. Right. right. And here's the thing I find interesting. If you look at the brown brothers, all their neighborhoods that were fighting and feuding with each other, they they made a pack in prison and that spread out to the streets. Right. Okay. Right now, Compton, okay, is like 60% Latino now. Yeah, probably more than that. You know what I mean? Right. Mm. You know I remember going through Compton, you might not even see a Latino when I was going out there in the 80s. You probably wouldn't right. even see one. Right. And now they're even telling brothers where they can sell drugs. How far they can go. They're even studying their history and their culture of the Aztec and the Inca and the Mayan people. Right now, and I was discussing it with the brothers out in the parking lot, there is now on the job application and many other applications, and, and this is also included in the census tract, there is a category for white Latino. This is why history is very important. In America, everybody that came here, except us, well, I mean, we didn't have a choice. We were kidnapped and brought here. But the Irish, the Italians, many of the Caucasian people who were migrating in here, who were immigrants, they had to go through a process where they could be accepted by America and become honorary white people. Okay. So what's happening is two things. You're hearing the Brown brothers, the older ones, telling the younger ones, don't come to prison for killing one of us. Stop killing us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have that. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the white power structure 
who's accepting their population explosion of the brown people and saying, you can be honorary white people. You can be a white Latino. Okay. You're eating it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be aware of what's going on. And you have to also understand this. Let me explain to y'all what all of y'all and the youngsters or anyone is listening. Uh, what is the religion of the elite? The people who run this country. The people who are running this world. This is what they believe. Robert Thomas Malthusian is an 18th century economist. Okay. Robert Thomas Malthusian believed that there are three things that you can do to control population. You introduce famine, diseases, and wars. If you implement these three things, he said, the death rate will go up and the birth rate will go down. Okay. This first movement in America was called the eugenics movement. Now it's called Planned Parenthood. Okay. The eugenics movement started after we were released from slavery after the Emancipation Proclamation because the elite had to make a decision. If we became citizens of America, that means they had to share the wealth. They weren't interested in that because the relationship that they were used to with us was us being the burden bearers, us being on the plantation, us working for free, right. us being <coughs> a piece of property or a piece of cattle, not as a human being. So after the Emancipation Proclamation, we're human beings. That means that you have to share with us what exists in America. And so they come up with Jim Crow. They come up with crack guidelines. You see the history, you see the correlation. And, 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 and this is what we need to make the youngsters aware. We need to arm them with knowledge. Knowledge is the thing. Because if I'm aware of what you believe in, it doesn't matter what, what you got. It don't matter how much money you got. Because if I understand what you believe in, that'll dictate what you'll do with what you got anyway. And so if, 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 if we're oversatiated lunatics like Bill Gates, and I'm going to call him out, and other elite lunatics okay. who believe there are too many people of color on the planet Earth, okay? If you believe that, hey, you believe in Robert Thomas Malthusians, you believe in population control, you believe there's too many people on the earth. You believe that there's not enough resources to move around and share with everybody. Well, motherfucker, why don't you kill yourself and leave your wealth behind? <laughs> How come they won't do that? Why is it Bill Gates? And another thing y'all need to look up too is the Georgia Guidestones. This is written in stone. The Georgia Guidestones have been placed up and on the Georgia Guidestones, the agenda of the elite is to reduce the world population down to 500 million. There's already close to 7 billion of us. That's a whole bunch of killing. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to do to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. But we need to, and I'm not trying to use lofty language or go way out, but we need to take that reality who are the real, the, the, the Dr. Frankenstein, we need to explain who the Dr. Frankensteins are and how they want to program us into being their monsters. We need to make sure that we're correlating the two and the youngsters, the young people are getting that. So they're not fooled. So I got this, I got that. Hey, you want to try this? You want to try that? Monkeys go for shiny things. Right. Are we monkeys? Not at all. That's the game plan. What you lack should motivate you. But if you're infuriated or you worship the things that you lack, then you go to extremes to get those things. 
And that's how we end up in the situation we're in. And it's important for brothers like you, because y'all survived the game plan. Okay. Brother, you didn't experience what you experienced for nothing. You didn't experience what you experienced for nothing. You didn't experience what you experienced for nothing. Okay. And and I'm sure there are people who who we've hurt who don't want to forgive us. That's true. Okay. But they need to understand we're acting out our program. We acted out our programming. That doesn't mean that we can't be account held accountable for our actions. But if you hate us vehemently like that, you should really hate the Frankenstein that created Indeed. us. Indeed. You should Indeed. hate them ten times more than you hate us. And, and, and we have to understand that a civilization means that people are civilized. Okay? So we need to really question what they define as civilization. Because if we will live in subhuman conditions that will bring out the worst in us, I mean, what, what have we become? We become murderers, liars, hood rats, niggas, bitches, hoes, snitches, whatever. Yeah, this is an empire right here. It's not a civilization. This right is here. what they pull out of us. Right. You can call out the worst in us. What kind of civilization do you have? They don't have civilization. They don't have civilization. So, uh, and, and I say that because there are a lot of people who, who, who are going to measure what we're doing or the efforts of what we're doing. Oh, them niggas is, them niggas is this and that. They did right, this. Right, and right. You, you, you hurt this person and you shot this person. Right. You did this and you did that and you did this. <coughs> you fuck them niggas and this and that. That nigga did this and this and that. He hurt this person in my family. But we all suffered. We all have suffered, man. Everybody got a dead homeboy. Everybody been to prison. Everybody had to make a collect phone call to find out what nigga was in the house that was doing the same damage that you was doing before you left. Right. Every, everybody is, has suffered in this self-inflicting war. Everybody has. And so people who, who might listen to this or hear this and think, want to dismiss this or whatever, that's okay. I just want to say to both of you brothers, man, God is the best of plans. Yeah. I want to say one more thing. The bullshit got to stop, man. No more in Nebraska, man. With this gang stuff. The bullshit stops, man. For real. I'm with you on that, brother. Hey. Hey, you got? You got what time is it? Uh, it's seven twenty, so you got about like what? Another ten minutes? Okay. Which I start about six thirty. Yeah. Since it's about another ten minutes, we got one going. Okay. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, let me let me close out um, with a prayer. Um, again, I want to personally uh, apologize. Um, to the people I've personally hurt in my life, black people. Um, and I want to apologize to all of the young people who are caught up in self-hatred, ignorance, and the blind leading the blind. I want to apologize to all your brothers and sisters out there, me personally. Uh, you got anything you want to close with, brother? I definitely want to apologize, too. I know there are a lot of people out there. And uh, hopefully one day we can get together. You know, I can apologize in your face, you know what I'm saying? But you know, I apologize sincerely. Go ahead, nephew. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, there's, there's a, lot, a lot of apologies to be made, but, you know, um, yeah, I can definitely take, take action and take responsibility for some things that's happened in the past. But also as well, though, you know, just let everyone know out there that, you know, we're totally serious about the movement that we're creating and that the movement that's moving. And at this point, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna live and die by this. So, 
you know, if, if something happens out there to where we're trying to make this change, at least we can go to, at least we can go to a better place knowing that, you know, we, we wanted to, you know, make a difference. So at the end of the day, even if we can just, I mean, I know, you know, y'all probably hear this a lot, but as long as if we can just say one of y'all, you know, I, I personally feel like, you know, job is done. But at the same time, though, you know, I mean, we need more than that. We need to save. We need to save all of y'all. We got just, just like, just like these brothers said, we got to stop this ignorance. We have to stop it, and we have to do it together. And that's that. We can get it done for sure, man. We're gonna get it. We're gonna, we gonna get it done. I know we can. And uh, us being the spiritual people and the godly people we are, I'm gonna close with a prayer. Uh, in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Praise be to God, the cherisher and sustainer of all the worlds, the most gracious, the most merciful, the master of the day of judgment. Thee do we worship, thine aid do we seek. Show us the straight way, the way upon those of whom thou bestow thy grace, those whose portion is not wrath, and who go not astray. I mean. <laughs> and you to the consequences. Robert Penn and Big Bar together yeah. working. And Roger, yeah, we're going to get it done, man. Yeah, I know we can get it done, man.